parts where I'm not sure I agree is um, it's some of your reasoning, which I think weakens your case. So, for example, you're right that the cells, even the minimal cells we see now are really again. complex. But I don't think anyone believes that the first cell was nearly as complex as the least complex cells today. So there's, I'll tell you the parts where I think I agree and the places where I think I disagree. I think like the place where I agree is that if there was a naturalistic way of, of origin of life happening, it wouldn't be a threat to my faith. I would just say that's how God did it. You know, I mean, God made the made a world where that was possible and it's happened. Um, if God required his direct intervention or, or just a, a like a frank miracle, that wouldn't be a problem for me either as a scientist. Uh, that would be how God did it. So, and, and that way, I think both Jim and I are appropriately agnostic. That's not really much a weighing there, right? I think I both agree with him. I said a whole bunch of stuff I agree with him too. Like, I don't actually think we can give an accurate account of how it happened. And even if we could, we have not yet demonstrated that's how it happened. So I think that any account of the scientific science of this really needs to come with that certain level of like a humility scientifically of well these are our ideas and this is you know what the science the evidence shows us but we can't get much farther than that so i agree with them on that i also do agree that there's often misunderstandings sometimes that are encouraged by the press or individual scientists or whatever that um, can really can really um, increase misunderstanding of our certainty here. All of that stuff we all agree on, and those are important things too. And you can you can clip that video out, Jim, and you can just like post that everywhere if you want. <laughs> now the parts, all right. the parts so, where can, I'm not can, sure. Cameron, I, just do it over and over again. I agree, I agree, of Joshua. Well, I I'll just take told every you every part where he agrees, and I'll just post that as an independent video. Yes. <laughs> the parts where I'm not sure I agree is. Um, it's some of your reasoning, which I think weakens your case. So, for example, you're right that the cells, even the minimal cells we see now are really again. complex. But I don't think anyone believes that the first cell was nearly as complex as the least complex cells today. And so, um, so yes, it's all very complex. Um but we think the first cells were more simple. And that still doesn't mean it's that we understand how. Complex. How many protein coding genes do you need? You know this better than anybody. Well, at, at, at least several hundred. Zero. It's possible, Jim, that you need zero in the first cell. Zero protein okay. coding, coding genes. And That's how do you do that, Joshua? How do you do that? So we're, 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 the, uh, well, look, we're the information. I'm not saying this is proven. I'm just saying that these are... Look, we're all in the dark here, so we want to consider all ideas. One idea he, that people put you out see, there. Cameron, he did not answer my question. No, no, I'm going to explain right now. The RNA world is an example of life without any protein coding genes. And where, where, where did the RNA come from? That's a different question. You asked, ah, ah, did the ah. first life need how many protein coding? And I said it's maybe it needed zero. And so that's all. That's all I'm talking about. I'm not saying and, we and understand how the, the RNA, RNA world got from? here. And, and where did where did the amino acids come from? And how did they get hooked together? And how did they get ordered in that way? Look, I'm not giving you. You're wanting from something for me that I've already told you up front, directly that I don't have. I don't have a full account. I'm just saying. It sounds like Josh is saying, yeah, ma no, maybe the complexity. He's not accurate. Maybe, maybe the complexity of the first cell is not as complex as you're saying it is. It sounds like that's I, what Josh I, is saying. I, granted, granted, it's not as complex, but it, the, the level of complexity that you need for even the simplest of life, we are clueless on. So you can't just say, well, you know, maybe it was less complex oh, no, I'm not one small just saying at that. a time, and we go, oh, okay, I, I believe that. So, so I was explaining where I think my disagreement is. It is not actually in those ultimate conclusions I agreed with. So I'm not going there. I'm not, I'm not trying to give an account of how the first life arose. What I'm saying is that an argument against all the abiogenesis re research that isn't clear that um, that you know the first cell was probably a lot less complex than the cells you were describing. I think I think that that risks the risks being misleading in a different way. I don't even think you believe that. I mean, like as I'm kind of talking to you about it, you're kind of saying something else, and I think that that's unintentionally can be misleading. 
And I think the other, I think the biggest conceptual reason where I'm trying to get past it, remember, I I'm a computational biologist, I'm a computational chemist, I think about things numerically, um, I, it is really that mathematical argument, I think is really something that I don't know how to get past agnosticism on it from a scientific point of view. Now, as a Christian, I think there's good reason Could to wonder. Could you clarify, I, it, if I didn't understand what you just said, I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't understand. So what I'm saying is scientifically taking, you know, uh, you know, scripture out of it um, and all those sorts of things, which make me more open to the idea of, uh, of God directly intervening. I, I, I don't know how to get past evidential agnosticism on this because of a particular mathematical argument. It has to do with um, with multiplying a very, very tiny number that you agree is not zero times a very, very, very large number. And we don't have a way of quantifying how small that is or how big that other number is. So that means that you get a number that's undefined. Like mathematically, it's like a zero divided by zero. It's undefined. You can't really say what it is. And so it's hard for me to know. And I agree. That means that the first cell in, in, in the scenario I'm giving you right now would be a statistical miracle. If we were, uh, you know, there was a movie recently, a comic book movie, uh, the Watchmen, they would call it a thermodynamic miracle. It would be a thermodynamic miracle, but it only happens. And, and Josh, once Josh it's, it's, it's not a single miracle. It's not a single miracle because for every step in the synthesis and the assembly, it's a small number. But you'd only have to number. cross that but, but, bridge so, so, but, one but, time. And you have to get. And you have to do it over and over again, and everything is fighting against no, no, you. you. Have, so you in other words, we're time. clueless. And if you you can, you know, mathematics can take you anywhere. You can just say it's a small number, big number. So it's, but it's non-zero. So I buy it. No, you got to do the chemistry. You got to think about the chemistry. And that's well, what I'm trying to tell them. More than agnosticism, it's not just too, a bunch but, of but mathematics. I'm just that we don't it know. is thinking about the chemistry. I'm just saying that we don't know. Um, and I think you actually even agree with that point. I yeah. think you actually yeah, agree with that. We don't know. We're clueless on this. We're clueless on this. And and the world is 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 primed to to make us think as if we know. So now, here's now, the now, ironic now. thing about where my argument would really fail. If we discovered life on other planets that were not in our solar system, if we discovered life on an exoplanet, it was far enough away that could have been, couldn't have been seeded from here, I think that would severely undermine my argument because it would show that life has arisen more than once in a, in a, in a fairly defined space 